Welcome back to the Sharm Grand Plaza. It's Alex Belfield talking to the Resort General Manager. That's Deflen Meisliner. How are you? Very well, sir. Thank you for a wonderful week. I've been here and enjoyed your buffet, your a la carte restaurants, obviously the incredible pools. The thing that stands out more than anything here, though, is the service, the customer service, the personal touch. More than any other Egyptian hotel I've stayed in, your staff really seem to care. How do you make them care? It's actually a very simple way. First of all, Egyptians by nature are friendly people. However, what we have done, we also give our staff a bonus system which is purely based on guest satisfaction and that makes the trick. And that's such a smart move on your part because you can have the greatest hotel in the world but if the staff are mean, rude or unhelpful you're going to go away unhappy so they're really the most important ingredient in a hotel, is that right? 100%. I can't agree with you more than that. One of the things that stands out about this hotel, again, is, is the grounds. They are spectacular. I've spent my week walking through many of the hotels and there's nothing that competes with the beautiful bushes that are so beautifully trimmed and your pools are so clean and it looks so inviting. Again, that's important to you, is it? Not only to me, to the entire team, because we have a system here, management by walking, the old phrase, yeah, but it is lift here. I start early in the morning, the first thing is I walk all over the place and there's a morning meeting, there's daily inspection rounds uh, to be sure it's kept like this. And then we've got the rooms which are beautiful in themselves. Again, if you get a twin room, you get two double beds, that's rare. Is this important to you to give sort of a step above everybody else and, and give that little something extra? Well, obviously that what makes the difference in our business. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Do, how do you provide the service to the client, yeah, that they're happy, and to show them something else. Like in our renovation project now, we will have walk-in showers, but we add a little thing. We will have a stool inside made of marble, so you can have even a shower seating. Very nice. Perfect. And then, of course, you've got this beautiful weather here. More or less 365, it's going to be sunny here, at least very warm. It's a unique resort in that way because Spain is closer to England. But, of course, six months of the year, it, it's not that great. And you can't rely on it. You, you are blessed with the weather here in Egypt in Sharm el Sheikh, aren't you? That is for sure. And because of the 365, yeah, that is the reason why we can also be very affordable. Yeah? We are 12 months resort. And in terms of the people coming here, I know you've got a mixed bag. There are a lot of Italians here, some Russians as well. This is an international resort, isn't it? Of course, of course, though uh, we would like to have more Brits, which is for sure. <laughs> Since uh, they're very uh, pleasing with the staff, they appreciate it, and there's no other nation in Europe who has such a potential for repeat clientele which is very important for every hotel. I know it's been a difficult couple of years for you. I was here last January and ended up on World News uh, talking about the stuff in Cairo and there were some problems here. It's not helped your PR. It's not helped bring people in. Are you recovering? Is it getting better now? Are people coming back? Well, uh, in terms of occupancy levels, yes, the improvement is there. However, for hotel is always twofold. It's the rate plus the occupancy. And we can foresee, and I think by 2013 winter time, we will be back where we were in 2010. We are very optimistic about it. The resort seems to be growing. There's lots of buildings being built everywhere. Are they being finished? Because I know a lot of people have gone bust. It's a bit like Las Vegas. It grew and grew and grew so big. And then everything stopped with the world economy. Well, uh, I cannot talk for others, but I'm building another hotel on the other side. Uh, we are going full ahead. Uh, we are not stopping and this will be opened by end of next year. Is that a brave management move or is that a stupid management move? Well, I think it's a very brave one yeah, and a very smart one on top of it, simply because now construction costs yeah, are low because everybody wants to have business. So we can dictate also pricing structures. Yeah. How difficult is it getting a hotel of this standard built over here, your five star? Is it easy to get the staff and get stuff done like you would, for example, in Britain or, or Germany, where you're from? Definitely not. It is not comparable. Uh, it's like all southern countries, a bit laid back, yeah, but also lovely at the same time. Yeah. However, the biggest challenge is, of course, the staffing. Due to the explosion in tourism here, I've been working the first time in the mid-80s in Egypt, yeah, and uh, I opened the Sheraton uh, uh, in, in Cairo, and we were the best hotel in the Middle East. These things have changed because, you know, the resources are not there. On top of it, the staff is not living here. They're living with their families in Cairo or uh, Alexandria, or even Upper Egypt. We transport them uh, regularly, and uh, one of the main issues is 
the stuff gets tired. But if it's like an oil rig system, yeah, that you're 20 days on and 10 days off, yeah, there's no other choice, yeah? unfortunately. Now, if you take a waiter uh, in summer, when you, two years ago we clocked 48 centigrade, yeah, and the poor guy on the bar who is now after one week there working, working, working for 12 hours a day, he is absolutely tired, but he's expected to still smile. And the surprising thing is they still do. How does Shamal Sheikh keep you? Because you've got a world-renowned reputation. I know you've just spent uh, the last week or so in Europe traveling around. And as you say, you've had some huge success over the years in the hospitality and hotel business. Why do you stay here? What's still exciting about this resort? Well, uh, the main reason is I do like Egypt. Of course, the weather is year-round nice. This adds always on, you know, uh, fog and rain. Nobody really wants it, yeah. And uh, I have a very good relationship with the staff as well as with the ownership of the company. And why do people come back here? What do they say? I mean, I know you're big on feedback here and you want to know what people think. W what is the reason that they, they love it so much? The cleanliness, the beautiful rooms? Is it the fact you've got such great gardens or you're on the beach? What, what is the most important factor? Uh, it's the stuff, again, again, the friendliness of the stuff. The second thing is the cleanliness of the gardens and uh, amazing setup. Yeah. And of course, not to be forgotten, it's very affordable also. Yeah. I think those are the combination of all of these factors. I want to talk to you about the food because there's two elements to this hotel. There's the a la carte restaurants, which I'll get to in a moment. Buffet food is not my favorite. I've got to be perfectly honest with you. It's normally cold. It's normally repetitive. It's normally not that great. Here, though, you do make sure it's warm. And I know the chefs go to great care, don't they, about the, the choice of menu and they keep it changing. It's difficult, isn't it? When you're eating in the same place three times a day, you've got to keep it fresh and enjoyable for people to come back and, and for it not to be a chore. One thing is very clear, you cannot please everyone, that is for sure. And also some of our foreign clientele, particularly from Europe, uh, comments come, we want bacon for breakfast. I said, yes, we are allowed to do it, there is not a strict, uh, restriction to it. However, I personally made the decision, we are not serving pork in this hotel, as a respect towards the people and the religion or main religion of the country. So this reduces, of course, uh, the, the choices. Yeah? So we're actually working with chicken, fish, and as everywhere on the, on, the, on the coast, the fish is more expensive than in capital cities. Yeah? The supplies, actually, our fish supply is not coming from here because there's no fishing permitted anyhow. Yeah? It comes actually from the Mediterranean side. Yeah? So transport costs and so on, this adds on. Yeah? Uh, however, we are trying uh, and regularly changing the menus. We also we have next week, for example, a chef coming from uh, overseas to retrain the staff. Uh, we bring a, a pastry chefs on, on, on one month, two months consulting uh, to refresh and, and to, to guide the people and to go on. I notice that just walking the streets here, the main Sharm Road, which goes for, for miles, it seems, to the airport one way and then down to the, the hotels the other, we're about halfway. There's a McDonald's there, there's TGI Fridays and all that stuff. And just walking down the main road, it felt safe. Um, I know we've seen on the TV the stuff that's happened in Cairo, but that's never been here, has it? Despite what you read, Sharm El Sheikh has never been affected by the uprising. Not at all. Uh, I made it a point uh, to drive around and to see if there's really anything, but there was nothing at all. Yeah? My wife is going out alone all the time yeah? and driving around and meeting people and sitting for a coffee in the old market or in the Mercado. There was not a slightest issue. Obviously, there were some minor things, but this is, has nothing to do with an uprising. Yeah? This was very much protected and has also something to do with the status of the Sinai as well, as such, with the Israel. Uh, Egyptian agreement uh, uh, and therefore security is here uh, very very strong. Congratulations on this tremendous hotel it's been a delight to meet you and your team as well the Sham Grand Plaza is here in Sham El Sheikh and you've got everything you've got the God-given sunshine the beautiful seas we haven't really mentioned that very much but I mean the diving is second to none best diving in the world isn't it? I guess so. I used to be diving for 15 years myself, uh, but I gave this one up, but I'm doing a lot of snorkeling still around. And there are some hidden places here where no access is there unless you live here. And uh, this is the real spot. Yeah? So the, the dive guys, when they go out with the boats, yeah, they're having some really places over on Tiran Island, uh, though there sometimes could be a bit uh, of a current, but then they move over to Ras Mohammed. Yes no limits to it yeah. or even going up to Dahab or the blue uh, hole uh, 
and don't forget this unspoiled uh, areas up to the Suez uh, Channel. This is 300 kilometers pristine beach with nothing there besides one uh, little city, which is a government city called El Tour, and in between there is nothing. So there is no limit on, in terms of expansion uh, without harming the environment on top of it, which should be considered at all times. And no matter how big charm gets, they don't allow anybody to mess around with the Red Sea. It's very precious to them. The coral is not being moved. And if you come here, you play by the rules. Absolutely. Our staff, uh, they are whistling if somebody walks over the, the reefs uh, and we pull the people back because this is the future. We have to protect it. Thank you again for a wonderful week here at the Sean Grand Plaza, a tremendous hotel and a uh, terrific staff as well and beautiful food. Your a la carte restaurants are lovely. I was at the uh, seafood restaurant last night, just tremendous. Uh, the longest steam were beautiful and then falafel the night before with the shish kebab and all that stuff. Very, very nice. Thank you for a lovely week. You're very welcome. Please come back.